I welcome all of you to the class. In the previous class, we were discussing about the false point method, false position method. And today we'll be solving few questions with the help of the false position method. And let's start with a question. The question is, by the way, today is our lecture four. We are starting with lecture four. Let's have, the question is, find the root of find the root of equation find the root of equation cos of x minus 3x plus 1 equal to 0 fine correct to three decimal positions three correct to three decimal positions okay so we are having the equation cos of x minus 3x plus 1 equal to 0 this equation we have to solve that is we have to find the values of x we have to find the values of x we have to find the values of x at which at which the given equation at which or we can say at which uh, the at which the right hand side of the equation becomes equal to the left hand side okay that is the entire left hand side of the equation becomes equal to the right hand side that's equal zero so how do we proceed fine how do we proceed so the solution is we have to solve this using the false position method so the solution will be the procedure of solving this question is the procedure of solving this question is is first of all we have to assume two values we have to make an assumption assume two values of x as the solutions okay assume two values of x as the assume two values of x as the as the initial values or the initial solutions what we can say okay or we say assume two values of x as we'll call this as initial approximations assume two values of x as the initial approximations. What do we mean by saying that we have to assume two values of x as the initial approximations? That is, we have to take any two values of x. Let's suppose we take, let x1, let's suppose we say x1 is equal to zero and x2 is equal to one. This is up to us, fine. This is clearly our decision, our jurisdiction. What we, uh, where from we start, okay? So we'll start with x1 equal to zero, x2 equal to one, fine. Then find the value of f of x1. f of x1 is equal f of zero, which is equal cos of zero minus three x, that is three into zero plus one, okay? Since cos zero is one, three into zero is zero, this is one, this is equal to, fine. Similarly, f of x2, becomes equal f of x2 is equal to 1 that's equal cos 1 minus 3 into 1 plus 1 fine be careful when you are solving for cos of an angle you have to take angle in radians okay so you have to take angle in radians so once we solve it cos of 1 in radians uh, minus 3 into 1 plus 1 it comes out equal minus uh, 1 point four five nine seven okay so look at the two values of x that is we have selected x1 and x2 such that f of x1 f of x1 is equal to 2 and 2 is greater than 0 f of x2 
is equal minus 1.4597 1.4597 which is certainly less than 0 okay so this was the initial condition okay that we had to satisfy while we select the values of x1 and x2 the values of x1 and x2 are to be selected such that f of x1 and f of x2 have opposite sign okay that is if you take the product f of x1 multiplied by f of x2 fine when you multiply f of x1 by f of x2 so it will be less than zero it will be negative okay f of x1 multiplied by f of x2 it will be negative okay it will be less than zero this is the condition that we have to satisfy as we were satisfying in the bisection method that is f of x1 into f of x2 should always be less than zero so we are fine with our first two approximations okay if this is not the case then we have to make new approximations new initial approximations by uh, by changing the value of x1 or changing the value of x2 or changing the value of both x1 or x2 okay but the important condition is that the product should always be less than zero fine once we are done once this chuck is okay once we have obtained that f of x1 and f of x2 is less than zero then we have to begin our iterations okay now as far as our iteration one is concerned i will rewrite the equation is cos of uh, 3x oh, sorry cos of x minus 3x plus one is equal to zero this is our equation okay now we have uh, initial approximation is x1 is equal to one okay and uh, sorry x1 is equal to zero and x2 is equal to one these are our initial approximations fine now we'll start our uh, we'll start our iteration one our iteration one will be we'll begin our iteration one okay iteration one is okay iteration one is uh, again obtain f of x1 we have already obtained that that is f of 0 and for us that's equal to fine and we have f of x2 okay that's equal f of 1 and for us f of 1 is equal to how much f of 1 is equal to minus 1.4597 okay now what we will do we'll obtain the value of x3 and from the previous class we know the formula of x3 is x3 is equal x1 multiplied by f of x2 minus x2 multiplied by f of x1 divided by f of x2 minus f of x1 okay this is how it goes x1 into f of x2 minus x2 f of x1 this is what we had derived in the previous class okay now substitute here our x1 is equal to 0 fine our x1 is equal to 0 multiplied by f of x2 is equal minus 1.4597 minus x2 our x2 is equal to 1 multiplied by f of x1 that's equal to divided by f of x2 that's equal minus 1.4597 minus f of x1 that's equal to fine so using this formula we'll get the value of x3 is equal the value of the x3 comes out equal uh, 0 0.5781 this is 0 0.5781 okay now let's see for us the value of x3 is equal 0 0.5781 okay now let's see what is the value of the function at x is equal 0 0.5781 that is obtain the value of now obtain the value of f of x3 okay obtain the value of f of x3 that becomes equal f of 0 0.5781 okay that is equal that is equal to cos of 0 0.5781 cos of 0 0.5781 minus 3 times 0 0.5781 0 0.5781 plus 1 okay that becomes equal once we solve it 
our function becomes equal if the, the value of this equation is equal 0 0.1032 okay this is the value of our f of x3 okay fine now look return back to the concept of the false point method fine while discussing the false position method we had stated let this to be the graph okay of our function which we have to solve let this to be our function f of x okay let this to be x1 such that at x is equal to x1 the value of our function is negative this is f of x1 okay and this f of x1 is negative this is x2 and here we have f of x2 okay and f of x2 is positive fine this was the initial approximation that we have to select this x1 and x2 in such a way that f of x1 and f of x2 are in the opposite side that is done now we have obtained the value of x3 the value of x3 is such that the value of our function is positive okay we have obtained the value of x3 in such a way f of x3 is positive it means x3 will be somewhere here it will be from here to here somewhere okay why because this point represents the point which we are searching this is our x solution this point we have to find okay now we have to we, in between the x solution and x2 okay in the domain in the region x solution to x2 the value of our function is positive okay our function is in the positive side fine so it means the value of x3 is somewhere in this region let's suppose the value of our x3 is here okay the value of x3 is here okay so because at this value because in this region from x solution to x2 the value of our function is positive therefore x3 will be somewhere in this region okay so here at x is equal to x3 the value of our function is positive f of x i will write this as this is f of x3 now see once we are done this much once we have found the value of x3 and we see that f of x3 is positive okay we have to go for the next iteration fine in the next iteration what we have to replace okay since you see your x3 is very very close to the solution point as compared to x2 okay x2 is somewhere here x x3 is somewhere here and x solution is somewhere here okay in the next uh, in the next uh, iteration what we will do we will replace this x2 by this x3 okay now we will take the solution domain going from x1 to x3 and we'll start searching we will now search our solution in this region no need to take this x3 okay x2 now we will take in place of x2 in the next iteration we will take what x x3 now our new solution uh, iteration domain or our new solution domain will be from x1 to x3 that is what i will do i will go for the iteration 2 uh, i will go for iteration 2 let me first clear it and see this is quite easy uh, we will be doing it the same way as we have done the previous methods we just have to be careful what we are obtaining the value of f of x3 as and what our new uh, domain should be solution domain should be okay so it will be like uh, it will be now in iteration 2 sorry in iteration 2 my x1 will be same as it was previously our x1 was in the previous iteration our x1 was equal to 0 so x1 continues to be 0 and our x2 will be now equal to x3 okay our x2 will be now equal to x3 and our x3 in iteration 1 was 0 0.5781 okay so it will be uh, 0 0.5781 0 0.5781 seven eight one okay this becomes our new uh, solution domain or the solution uh, region okay let me make a little correction here the correction is coming um, thank you to the students who have corrected me the graph is is not like the one i have drawn okay i'm really sorry for the wrong graph here or correct we have the value of our function is quite different okay it's like this is our our function at x1 okay is positive okay 
it is positive and at x2 it's negative fine at x2 at x1 our function is positive f of x1 is 2 and at x2 our function is negative fine now we have obtained the new value of uh, x that is x3 at which again our function is positive okay our x3 will be somewhere here in this domain okay in this region this is let's suppose our x3 is somewhere here at which our function is positive therefore the new search domain will be new search domain we have to replace x1 not x2 the new search domain for us will be we will now not take this x1 we'll take x1 is equal to x3 okay that is our x1 will be equal to x3 that is equal to, uh, 0.5781 yes 0.5781 and the value of our x2 will be equal the value of x2 will continue to be 1 we don't we don't change this x2 because at our x2 f of x2 is negative but our x3 uh, the value of our function is positive so in spite of taking this now our solution domain will be from here to here okay now again return obtain the value of f of x1 okay that is f of 0 0.5781 which is equal cos of 0 0.5781 minus 3 into 0 0.5781 plus 1 okay that comes out equal our f of x1 is coming out equal to 0 0.1032 fine now we have already calculated the value of our f of x2 that's equal to f of 1 which is equal cos of 1 minus 3 into 1 plus 1 and that is equal our f of 1 is coming out minus 1.4597 minus 1.4597 okay now take the value of x3 our x3 is equal x1 f of x2 minus x2 multiplied by f of x1 divided by f of x2 minus f of x1 okay that is equal to our x1 is equal to 0 0.5781 that is 0 0.5781 multiplied by f of x2 that is minus 1.4597 minus x2 that is 1 multiplied by f of x1 that is 0 0.1032 0 0.1032 divided by f of x2 minus f of x1 that is minus 1.4597 minus 0 0.1032 that comes out equal the value of x3 will come out equal it's equal uh, let me solve it it is 0 0.6059 0 0.6059 okay so we'll return the value of our x3 is equal 0 0.6059 okay now let's see what is f of x3 our f of x3 is f of 0 0.6059 okay that is equal cos of 0 0.6059 minus 3 into 0 0.6059 plus 1. Okay, that is equal f of x3, it is 0 0.00. It comes equal to 0 0.0043. It's again positive, so it's again greater than 0. Okay, so return back to your graph return back to our graph the value of our function is like it's like this okay we had started from x1 this is the value of our x2 sorry this is x2 here this is f of x2 it is negative f of x1 is positive okay no problem now see what's happening we are getting the new value of x3 somewhere here because the value of our f of x3 is again positive so it means the value of x3 will be somewhere here okay because at this value the value of our function is positive okay now what we will do we will take the new solution domain 
we'll take the new uh, search domain, what we call as from X3 to X2, okay? Such that in the next iteration, that is iteration three, our X1 will be equal, X3 will be equal to 0 0.6059. And the value of our X2 continues to be equal one, okay? So let's go to the iteration number three. So as we go to the iteration three, what we will obtain. This is quite easy now. We'll keep on continuing the iteration. Let me quickly go to the iteration three. Let me clear all ranks that will help me out. Okay, so we'll take up the iteration three. So let me take up the iteration three. In iteration three, our X1, yes, in iteration three, the value of our X1 is 0 0.6059. It is 0 0.6059. The value of our X2 is equal to one, fine. Now obtain the value of F of X1, which we have already obtained when X1 was taken as X3, that is F of 0 0.6059, okay? And that comes out equal 0.0043, fine. Then f of x2, we already have this value in hand, that's equal to f of one, okay? And we know our f of one is equal minus 1.4597, fine? This is our f of x2. Now, based on these values, obtain the value of x3. The value of our x3 will be equal, clean it, x3, is equal. Now I know the formula. It is x1 f of x2 minus x2 f of x1. I will directly write down the values. x1 is 0 0.6059 x1 multiplied by f of x2 that is minus 1.4597 minus x2 that is 1 multiplied by f of x1 that is 0 0.0043. Okay. Divided by f of x2 minus f of x1, that is minus 1.4597 minus 0 0.0043, okay? Therefore, x3 becomes equal, the value of x3 comes out equal 0 0.6071. Find the value of f of x3. The value of f of x3 is cos of 0 0.6071 minus 3 into 0 0.6071 plus one, okay? And f of x3 comes out equal, it's a very small number. It comes out equal 5 into 5.8 into 10 raised to power minus six, okay? So this is the value of f of x3. And you see the value of f of x3 is again positive. It's again greater than, greater than zero. Fine. So what will be the new search interval? The new search interval will again be, I need not to redraw the graph. I will directly go to the iteration number four. Again, you see the value of your f of x3 is positive. Therefore, the new search interval, as you were doing previously, will be x1 will be taken equal to x3 and x2 continues to be equal one. Okay. This will be our new search domain. And our x3 is, by the way, equal uh, 0 0.60. Seven one. So with these values, we'll begin our iteration number four. That is, let's go to the iteration four. Let's go to iteration four. As we go to the iteration four, we begin with few values of x. Okay, that is, our x one is equal zero point six zero seven one, and our x two is equal one. Okay, fine. What is f of x1 equal? We have just found that f of x1 is f of 0 0.6071. And that is equal, f of 0 0.6 is 5.8 into 10 is power minus 6. Is 5.8 into 10 raised to power minus 6. And our f of x2, we have been carrying this forward, is f of 1, which is equal minus 1.4597. Okay. 
With these values, we find the value of x3 again. x3 is equal to x1 f2 minus x2 f1. So x1 is 0.6071 multiplied by f of x2. That's minus 1.4597 minus uh, this is uh, x1 minus uh, into f of x2. Now we have x2. That's equal one. Okay, multiplied by f of x2. That's equal 5.8 into 10 raised to power minus 6 whole divided by f of x2 minus f of x1 that's minus 1.4597 minus 5.8 into 10 raised to power minus sorry 10 raised to power minus 6 that comes out equal 0 0.6071 fine this is the value of our what? X3. Find the value of f of x3. The value of our f of x3 is uh, cos of 0 0.6071 minus 3 into 0 0.6071 plus 1. That's equal 5.88 into 10 raised to power minus 6. Okay. Now see, uh, look into the values of x. So we started with, let me clear all the drawings and go what I have obtained. Let me write from here, iterations. What iterations we have taken? Iterations, iteration one, iteration two, iteration three, iteration four. Okay. So the values of x1, we started. The values of x2, we started. The values of x3, we obtained. Okay. We started with the value of x1 equal to zero and x2 equal to one. This was, uh, this is what we assumed, okay? This is what we started with. If you look back to our data, uh, we begin, we started our iteration with x1 equal to zero and x2 equal to one. Then we went to the iteration two and our x1 was equal 0 0.5781 and our x2 was equal to one, okay? In iteration three, our X1 was equal to 0 0.6059, 0 0.6059, and our X2 was one. In iteration four, our X1 was equal 0 0.6071. Um, in iteration four, it was 0 0.6071, X2 continued to be one. And X3, look into the values of the X3 that we obtained. In iteration one, we obtained it as 0 0.5781, okay? In iteration two, we obtained it as 0 0.6059. In iteration three, we obtained it as 0 0.6071, 0 0.6071. In iteration four, we obtained it as uh, 0 0.6071, 0 0.6071. Look into your two iterations. Have a careful look of two iterations. Look here. Look into iteration three and iteration four. As you move from iteration three to iteration four, there is no change in the value of X3. In fact, as you go ahead, if you go to the iteration five as well, you will find that the value of X3 will continue to be equal to 0 0.6071. Okay, see the change in the values. Uh, up to the second decimal place, there is no change. Okay, you will find as you will go ahead, this will continue to be 0 0.60, 0 0.60, 0 0.60. And this term will also remain constant as you move from, as you continue your iterations. Therefore, we conclude that X3 is equal 0 0.6071 is one of the solution of the equation, is one of the solution, is one of the solution. Okay, so for the equation, cos of x minus 3x plus 1 at x is equal 0 0.6071. The value of this function almost almost becomes equal to 0. Therefore, we take this value to be as one of the approximate solution. This is how the solution, this is how the equation works. In the same way, I'm giving you a few problems to solve. Like, uh, let me take a problem. Solve the following problems using the false point method, okay? The first problem we have to solve is x cube minus 2x 
minus five equal to zero using the false position method. Second equation is two x minus log of x minus seven equal to zero. And the third equation we have to solve is four e raised to power minus x sine of x minus one equal to zero. Okay, these are the three equations. By the way, these equations are called uh, out of these three equations. If you look at this one, uh, this equation is called the algebraic equation. This is algebraic equation. And these two equations are called the transcendental equation. These are called the transcendental equation. The reason for these equations being called as transcendental equation is look here into this area is for x. Look into sine x. Look into log of x. Using a Taylor series, using Taylor series, using Taylor series, these equation can be expressed these equations can be expressed as a series of an infinite polynomial of an i will write of an infinite term polynomial that will be more correct of an infinite term polynomial an equation which is written whose terms are written as a sum of, as a series of an infinite term polynomial, such an equation is called the transcendental equation. Whether you have a transcendental equation or we have an algebraic equation, both of the two methods can be solved using the false position method. This work I'm giving to the students and with this, I will end up my class. Thank you very much.